All right, and we can begin. Hi everyone, thank you so much for coming. We're just gonna give it one more minute to give everybody a chance to filter in and we will get started. All right, everybody. So we're just going to start out with a few housekeeping rules. Um, so if you do have a question, please submit it via the Q&A button right down below. And then just be conscious to not share any personal information in the Q&A. So with that, I'm going to pass it over to Rhett Buttle, who is the president of Public Private Strategies. Well, hello, everyone. Thank you so much for joining us this afternoon, especially on a Friday. We know how crazy it is for business owners and business leaders across the country as you're closing down many of you your weeks and getting ready to continue to do work on the weekend because that's what we know uh, business owners, particularly small business owners do. Um, I'm so pleased to be here today in my hat as co-executive director of the Small Business Roundtable. And I just wanted to take a moment uh, to talk about the importance of this conversation. Not only uh, do we have a historic nomination by President Biden to the Supreme Court uh, with uh, nominating the first African-American woman, but she's an amazing woman with solid credentials. And for the business community, the Supreme Court has become increasingly more important, particularly for small businesses. In the last few years, we've seen a number of critical cases make its way to the Supreme Court that really do impact the day-to-day -day lives of all Americans, but also uh, those of us who work in the small business community. And so we wanted to have a conversation today to hear a little bit more about where we are in the process, how you can get involved as a business leader in this moment. And we're so thrilled not only to be uh, joined by Mignon Moore from the White House, but also an amazing set of business leaders, uh, leaders from chambers of commerce, from our diverse chambers, uh, and as well as business leaders from all across the ecosystem who are gonna share some of their important perspectives today about why they're lifting their voice and being involved in this conversation in this moment. So with that, we're so excited uh, to get this conversation going. Thank you again for being here. And it's my pleasure to turn the conversation over to uh, my partner in crime, Renee Johnson, who's a senior advisor at the Public Private Strategies Institute. Huge thanks to so many of our partners today for co-sponsoring this event. With that, Renee, over to you. Thank you, Rhett. Uh, hello, everyone. My name is Renee Johnson, and I'm a senior advisor here at Public Private Strategies Institute. We're excited to host this important conversation and briefing in conjunction with our amazing stakeholders that have come together for today's conversation with Mignon Moore, who is the nomination advisor for engagement, who leads the White House efforts to confirm Judge Jackson to succeed uh, Justice Stephen Breyer as an associate justice of the Supreme Court of the United States. The business leader briefing began uh, as a series with members of the Biden-Harris administration and other small business ecosystem leaders to provide small business leaders like you a seat at the table to share what's most important to you. So we're glad to have you all here. We also like to thank our partners for engaging and inviting their members from across the country to be a part of this conversation. So I know this next slide right here, if you wanna go for, uh, to the next two slides. We have so many amazing partners that were here and engaged. Thank you so much for putting this information out to all of your networks. Thank you again. Um, before we get started, I wanna reiterate a few items. Uh, please note this briefing is being recorded and there may be reporters present. 
And then after today's briefing, we'll send you a link to the recording, which you'll also be able to see on Facebook Live or our Facebook page, the Public Private, uh, Private Strategies page. Uh, and with that, I'm so excited to introduce uh, our amazing speaker for today, Mignon Moore. Mignon Moore is considered one of the nation's most top strategic thinkers with ex extensive experience in political and corporate affairs, as well as public policy. She leads DSG's state and local affairs and multicultural strategies practices with clients ranging from the Fortune 100 to startup nonprofits seeking counsel for developing strategies that address emerging consumer markets and achieve public, achieve public policy goals. She specializes in building coalitions and brand awareness strategies for corporations while at the same time effectively addressing their state and local policy issues. And more importantly, she is doing the amazing work of ensuring that we have a new and amazing first Black woman Supreme Court justice. And with that, my, my favorite woman, icon and Chicagoan, Ms. Mignon Moore. Thank you so much, Renee. But I will let me first start off by saying I am on a leave of absence. Uh, I do work for the Dewey Square Group as my full time job. And so I join many of the small and medium sized businesses here today. But uh, for the last two months, I have been on leave of absence working on behalf of the president and making sure that we get the next Supreme Court justice. First, I'd like to simply thank each and every one of you for all that you've done to get us to this point. The one thing that we do know, it's been a coalition of business leaders, labor leaders, activists, black, brown, Hispanic, Latino, Asian American, the disabled community, LGBTQ plus community, all of that coalition has come together to support this nominee. And we cannot be more thankful for everything that you've done from the early endorsements that you've sent out to your support during her hearings, which I'll talk about in a minute, and the support that you're giving her as she gets ready to get, get her affirmation and her vote. Now we all watch the hearings. We all had hoped, even, even the judge had hoped that we would be able to go through these hearings with respect, with respect for the rule of law, with respect for the Constitution. But, you know, some of the senators showed up and showed out. But I think what she showed us is that very last word she used is perseverance and grace and steadfastness, steadfastness. And she also showed us her judicial temperament, which is so important as she goes onto the Supreme Court. I think what we can all take notice of is the way she has handled and conducted herself. Now, I would be the first to argue, no one should have to sit through some of the insults that was hurled at her, but again, because she understands what she is going through and how important this, this position is, she managed to make it through it. Obviously, we all witnessed the, the spectacular speech of Senator Cory Brown, the grace of Senator Padilla, the impeccable intellect of Senator Hirano, and the, the real questioning of Senator Ossoff. All of those things led to her being able to show that she was immensely qualified to be on this Supreme Court. So where do we go from here? First of all, as you've probably seen in the press, Senator Manchin, Senator Lujan, Senator Duckworth, Senator Markey, Senator Bennett, they have all announced that they will be supporting her. You've also probably noticed that McConnell has announced his opposition, and it's basically around the core packing issue, which in fact, she stated very clearly that that is in Congress's jurisdiction, not hers. Collins and Mikowski, unfortunately, due to conflicts, did not watch the hearings. But Collins has requested clarification on some issues, and she'll be receiving those over the weekend. Romney, was he looked at Holly's attacks, and he basically responded, there's no there there. 
Now, he has expressed some concern about judicial philosophy. And as she as she stated, she has a judicial methodology. And I believe that she walked them through her three points over and over again. So there's lots of support mounting up for her. And what we can ask of you to do is continue being optimistic, continue to let your constituents know what her credentials are, make sure that they understand that she is more than qualified to do this. And as we go into Monday, what you will see is starting at three o'clock, the Judiciary Committee will meet they will consider the judge's nomination. Republicans will ask for and will receive a one week delay in that vote. On April 4th, I might mention, it is the date of the assassination of Dr. King, but it's also the birthday of Dr. Mac Maya Angelo. The, committee, the Judiciary Committee will meet and vote on Judge Jackson's nomination. So what you should what you should pay attention to is there will be no boycott. We have already received the assurance from several members, Tillis and Sass and others, that they will be showing up. But what we can ask you to do is make sure for those who have been respectful, for those who have questioned her already, for those Republicans and Democrats, if we can continue to say she deserves and we would love to have her have bipartisan support during this week, week where they will be deliberating, we ask that you still contact your senators, applaud them where necessary, push them, and conjole them where, where necessary. But at this point, we just believe that in all that we are doing for her, what we want to do is show the respect that she has earned and deserved. Um, next week is gonna be an exciting week. Again, I thank you so very much for all that you're doing for her. And I believe if she was on this call, she would tell each one of us and she would say to us, just persevere. Thank you so much. Wow, Mignon, that is amazing. And so much has happened uh, behind the scenes with so many members uh, of Congress and the Senate side um, that you're, you're definitely giving us some tea uh, that of course that isn't even in the news yet. And so these are all small business owners you know, from across the country. And I, I know many of them wanna know how can they get involved? So during this confirmation process, what can these small business owners who are, who are sitting here, who are like actively engaged, who wanna help advocate, what can they do to help with this confirmation process? Well, I think the first thing you could do is make sure you continue to speak out and speak up on her behalf. I've always been a firm belief it's the small and medium sized businesses that run the economy in this country and you're the influencers in this country. So many leaders will and many communities will listen to this small and medium sized business leaders. So what we're asking you is if people are confused, please reach out to us, reach out to Renee, reach out to me. If they need more information, then please let us provide that so that they can have a clear understanding of this process. Because I believe, again, as you watch Judge Jackson talk about the process, the federal, the executive, and the judicial process, and as she stated, she stays in her lane, I think articulating, especially to young business owners, to young people, to your constituents that service your businesses, articulating that you want a fair and now a respectful process will be key. That's number one. Number two, many of you now are on social media. We ask that you continue to raise, as in the words of Cory Booker, raise the joy. Continue to lift her up in ways that they have not seen so that we, we will be the ones telling them we will not stand for this. So continue to lift her up. And then secondly, if you need additional information about things that you're hear, hearing around her record, let us know. 
we want to arm you with everything that you need to not only call your senators, not only reach out to your constituents, but if you're in the media, make sure you have the right talking points so that you can feel comfortable speaking up on the judge's behalf. Wow. That's a lot of amazing things. And of course, social media is very important. And we know many of these small business owners across the country use social media all the time. So that is very good to know. And I think the last question I want to ask is about this confirmation process, because many are confused. They're not really sure and understand. I know you kind of ran it down, uh, but just in, in lay terms uh, for, for some of us, uh, the, the committee has to vote her out essentially right and then april 4th on april 4th so then what happens next if her confirmation comes out of the judiciary committee on april 4th what are those next steps the next step is she goes to the floor for a full vote and as as one of the senators said in the hearing you will probably hear a lot of things that you've already heard from the judiciary committee from the foes and the proponents and so you know it'll probably be a very long night but it is our hope again that we will get you know bipartisan support you know on a tie vote as we all know if we end up on a tie vote and we we hold all the democratic senators then the vice president will be the tiebreaker wow that's amazing so we can expect to see hopefully the confirmation process is sometime soon hopefully before summer uh, well no actually they their timeline is before easter recess to have a full vote well look at that that's even quicker so yep. let's cross that this happens so we know you have a lot of work to do, uh, and we thank you so much for all the work you have done and are doing and continue to do. Uh, we're not going to hold you because we know you got to go do some more work now. <laughs> uh, but we thank you for your well, Thank you so much. And, you know, Ron and Bill and Leroy, all the good work that you're doing, Renee and, and Bill and others, just thank you so very, very much. I couldn't thank you enough. Well, thank you. We appreciate you. And any parting words that you have for our small business owners? Well, I would say just keep at it and hopefully we'll all see everybody on the White House lawn. Yay! <laughs> Ken Mignon, appreciate you. Okay, thank you so much. Bye-bye. Well, now we're going to go to our panel and I'm so excited to introduce you all to the amazing CEO and president of the National Minority Supplier Development Council, Yee McGuire. On the cusp of its 50th anniversary and a pivotal moment in the nation's history, the National Minority Supplier Development Council, NMSDC, uh, America's most influential and successful minority business development organization, announced the appointment of Yee McGuire as the new president and CEO last year. Ms. McGuire serves as NMSDC's first Asian American Pacific Islander of AAPI um, uh, heritage. And she has been bringing over two successful decades of leadership experience across both for nonprofit and for profit sectors. So without further ado, the amazing, the wonderful Ying McGuire. Well, thank you, Renee. Good afternoon and a good morning for the, those folks on from the West Coast. My name is Ying McGuire, the CEO and the president of the National Minority Supply Development Council. I'm really truly happy and glad to be here today and join you uh, in this discussion regarding to the confirmation of a Judge Jackson. And as Renee mentioned, I will be your moderator and I'm very honored to share this virtual panel with three amazing leaders. And I'll start with Ron Busby, the president and the CEO of the US Black Chamber. Ron brings business management skills as well as a lifetime of a community development experience to the organization. And Ron is actually an entrepreneur himself. He uh, was, was recognized as one of the best CEOs out there and he grew his company USA Super Clean from $150,000 to $15 million. Amazing. And then we have a Bill Amada, board member of a National ACE. Bill is a founder, chairman, and CEO, uh, chief connectivity officer of IW Group, a minority-owned and operated advertising and marketing agency focusing on 
growing multi multicultural markets. And Bill's also NMSBC certified MBE. Thank you, Bill. For more than 30 years, uh, Bill has represented some of the top four Fortune 500 companies in US, including Coca-Cola, GM, McDonald, and then many more. And then we have my fellow Texan, Leroy, Vice President of the Government and International Affairs of the United States Hispanic Chamber of Commerce. We have a great representation today. And then Leroy has been strongly committed to service, community development, and political activism by working with organizations and government entities dedicate, dedicated to, the, to those endeavors. So, so let's start a conversation here. Um, let me uh, get the first question to Ron. Uh, Ron, uh, what are your thoughts on seeing the first Black woman of color, Black woman, be nominated as a su Supreme Court Justice and what does that mean to you and your stakeholders? Well, thank you for the question. Thank you for the opportunity to be here. Um, and it's a profound time for the U.S. Black Chamber. Yesterday, we actually had our women's luncheon, our Power 50 Women's Luncheon, where both Mignon Moore as well as Renee Johnson were both acknowledged and recognized for their efforts and support of the economy. Uh, and as black leaders, black women leaders. It has amazed me to see this last week of televised uh, hearings. I think a few years ago, we saw the murder of George Floyd on TV and it really opened up a dialogue across the country in reference to racism and what many black Americans have to deal with on a day-to-day -day basis. I think in this case, uh, the US Black Chamber represents 152 chambers and about 300,000 black owned businesses. The majority of those black businesses are headed by black women. The fact is that black women are the fastest growing business sector in this country. And many of them are seeing themselves on TV. Many business owners, many corporate executives, many entrepreneurs, as well as employees are seeing themselves deliberately uh, challenged for their knowledge. They have an experience that they bring to the table. They have an understanding, they have education, they have degrees. And with that, still being challenged on their views, their experiences, as well as their values. And so for us at the US Black Chamber, we are saying we're happy to see that America is now seeing what we have to deal with on a day-to-day -day basis. We know we bring expertise, we know we bring it a sense of knowledge and a sense of pride, but so often it gets challenged and it only happens in boardrooms and in offices where many other people don't have the opportunity to witness this. And today, this week, we are seeing it being acknowledged by America that many black women are being challenged, not because of their acumen or their skills or their experience, but just by the length of their hair and or the color of their skin. This week, we saw the passage uh, of the act where Black women and Black people now can no longer be discriminated against for their hair care. The Crown Act, where the U.S. Black Chamber was one of the first supporters of that initiative. Things like that don't get the popular conversation, but are really forward-thinking activities in which we as a community face that no other community has to deal with. And so we are extremely proud of Judge Jackson Brown. We've seen her grace. We've seen her tenacity to be able to take on the challenges that she's facing as an individual, as a judge, as a legal expertise, and still have to go through some of these things. But as an organization, we are extremely proud to support her. Uh, we have our partners here with us who also feel the same way. And we are happy that America is now being stronger. We see that America is strong when we have diversity. And this woman here really represents the diverse intellectual property of this country. And we are very proud to stand with her. Thank you, Ron. Appreciate your insights and be the voice for the Black business community. Um, Leroy, let me um, 
give you a question here. How does this nomination impact your small business owner network? Well, thank you so much, Ying, for that question. And thank you to Public Private Strategies and the White House for bringing us together to have this very necessary and timely conversation in American history, quite frankly. Um, the United States Hispanic Chamber of Commerce represents the interests of 5 million Hispanic businesses in America and 63.5 million Latino and Latinas living in America. And for us, this nomination was a no brainer from the very beginning, because we understand that by having Judge Jackson Brown on the court, that the Latino community is also going to win, that our judicial system is going to win, that the highest court in this country is going to finally reflect the true diaspora of America. And the 63.5 million Latinos and Latinas that we represent are a critical part of that diversity, not just because of our sociability or our cultural ties, but because of our economic vitality. Um, earlier this week, I was quoted in the New York Times making that very argument why we needed Judge Jackson on the court and how it tied to the economic vibrancy of America. Because quite frankly, if you have somebody on the highest court making decisions that are in the best interests for minorities in this country, it will only correlate into financial stability for those diverse groups in this country. Our brothers and sisters from the Black Chamber, from the API community, this is a win across the board. Because of her stellar professional record in representing law and representing minorities in this country, this is a moment in history. This is something that will have impact for generations to come, way beyond our lifespan. So that is why from the very beginning, our chamber endorsed this nomination by President Biden. Our president and CEO, Ramiro Cavazo, stood in solidarity with Latino leaders and the Congressional Hispanic Caucus on the steps of the Supreme Court calling for the Senate to make a swift confirmation of this nomination so that the highest court in this land can reflect the true diversity of America. Thank you, Leroy. And I thank you so much for your work supporting the community of color Hispanic businesses. And I'm looking forward to attending and speak at your annual uh, USHCC Legislative Summit in DC and uh, work with you to promote uh, businesses in the systematically excluded communities of color. Uh, Bill, uh, as a board member of the National ACE that represent AAPI business community, how do you see this confirmation of Judge Jackson impacting members of your organization? So when I helped co-found uh, National ACE, which is the Asian and Pacific Islander American Chamber of Commerce and Entrepreneurship, we wanted to make sure that we had strong representation and a voice in the halls of government. And what is so critical about this specific appointment is that Judge Jackson represents all of us. She started off working as a public defender for the federal government. Uh, that is a critical piece to why we're so, so supportive of her because the 2 million Asian American and Pacific Islander businesses that span across our country, including the island areas and the freely associated states, they want to make sure that someone who is from the grassroots, someone from the community, someone that understands the struggles that so many business leaders and business organizations go through each and every day is represented on this court. And what is also important about Judge Jackson is Judge Jackson said something really critical. She loves this country. And all the businesses that live in this country and work in this country also love this country. But we will love this country when we see people like her who represent and reflect us 
in the communities that we so dearly serve. And so what is so important for all of the Asian American and Pacific Islander businesses that exist here throughout the country, we need you to talk to your customers, to the people that you see each and every day and engage them because we're not in just the blue states, we're in the red states and the purple states. And this appointment speaks to us in a variety of ways. We also have a large number of women-owned businesses. Women drive many of our businesses and organizations and they help fuel our businesses. We need to have that perspective on the court. We also need to have somebody that understands the importance of voter education and voter rights and education uh, because, and she brings that. We also need to make sure that we have somebody that understands that not everyone in this country has equity, that not everyone in this country has the same toolbox, the same ideas, the same access to education, the same access to the dollars. And she's one of those people that we know is going to be able to not only represent us on the bench, but also make sure that every community, regardless of whether or not they're a community of color, um, will have balance. And as business people, we want to see that balance. And right now, it does not exist on the court. Thank you, Bill. Um, she represents us. She represents the new mayor. I appreciate your words of wisdom there. And finally, I'd like to ask anyone on the panel on uh, your thoughts uh, regarding the comments about Judge Jackson's ability to, to be confirmed and if she would be a great justice for small business owners. Who wants to go first? Some of you on me. Uh, Bill. Um. I have to say, listening to the confirmation hearings, and I, I don't want to add controversy to the conversation because this is a positive thing, uh, but I do have to say I was disturbed uh, significantly by the conversation. Um, and, and Ron and I've had conversations in the past about how um, Black Americans have been treated in our country. But what was on full display to me and the rest of the country and, and in many parts of the world is what black people, black Americans and black women in particular have had to deal with. Uh, and this line of questioning was quite disturbing to me, but, but it actually empowered me in some way and empowered National Ace to say, this has got to stop. Um, that we as business people, as small business people and medium-sized business people need to step up and say that this, type, this line of questioning is not only divisive, it's destructive, and it creates this level of division that we do not need in our country right now, nor does business community. So I have to say I was disturbed by it, but one thing that did motivate me from that conversation is that Asian Americans and Pacific Islander business owners and leaders across the country, we need to be in lockstep with our black brothers and sisters, our, our Latino and Latina brothers and sisters and people in the LGBT communities and, and indigenous communities. So if anything, it's given us more stronger direction and purpose that we need to stand up to this type of negative questioning and make sure that we have an opportunity for Judge Jackson to serve in this role. I'll Thank follow you. up with Bill uh, Ying and, and saying, Bill, I don't think that you're making the conversation controversial at all. You're only calling out what we all saw on our television sets during this line of questioning, that existential racism for black and brown and LGBTQ and AIP communities is still alive and well in America. And we are socially and politically responsible as business organizations to bring an end to that threat in this country because our economic vitality depends on stopping those walls that are being built for people like Judge Jackson Brown, who we all know is very professionally capable of taking on this role. And yes, I, we have to bring out what we saw in this hearing and nobody deserves to sit in that desk at a Senate confirmation hearing and be badgered by people who we elect 
to represent our best interests the way that she was. And so we have to bring voice to this, not in a problematic or in a negative way, but call it for what it is. Because any type of racism, any type of injustice in America, in any part of the world is not good for business. Right on, brother. Well, I couldn't have said it any better. Uh, and I appreciate both of your comments there as well as your passion. Um, I just want to say, uh, so often we hear about what's going on in American politics. And I kind of want to make this announcement. One, this would not have happened under the previous administration. Just would not have happened. And two, I want to make sure that we as a country see this as a win. Um, these have been difficult years for the United States, but I definitely believe this is an opportunity for us to celebrate. Uh, a huge opportunity for this country to move forward with something that has been really a challenge for us as a country to get true representation, true diversity on the Supreme Court justice. And under the Biden administration, he made a commitment when he was running and he has followed through with that commitment very early on under his administration. And for that, I wanna say kudos. And I want us to remember this during both the next election for midterms, as well as the presidential election. Campaigns, promises have a lot to do with what happens in that next term. And I just want to make sure that we as leaders are saying thank you to President Biden for living up to something that has truly been a challenge for him, but more importantly, a challenge for the pre previous 44 presidents, 45 presidents, to actually implement and execute. And so kudos to this administration, congratulations to him, and we will be here with her as she goes through next week's confirmation and voting, as well as her term as she serves on the board, as she serves on the Supreme Court of Justice. Thank you, Ron, Leroy, and Abel. Uh, ethnic minorities represent 40% of U.S. populations. By 2045, it will be the new majority, and the Supreme Court justice must reflect the new America. And you said it right, we must treat people of color and the people with respect and the dignity. With that, I'd like to thank you all uh, for joining me today and, and appreciate your advocacy and your voice. And now I want to turn over to our friend Candace Waterman, CEO and a president of Women Impacting Public Policy. Candace? Thank you so much, Ying. Um, thank you to all who have joined us today. And thank you to my colleagues who have provided um, an amazing, amazing uh, panel discussion um, that you just heard. Um, from them. This conversation is certainly one um, that we have needed, certainly one, <clears throat> excuse me, that is very timely. As Ying says, I am Candace Waterman, President and CEO of Women Impacting Public Policy. Um, WIP is the leading national nonpartisan organization on the Hill representing the over 12.9 million women owned businesses across the country. You know, today's conversation regarding the nomination of Judge Brown Jackson to serve as the next Associate Justice of the Supreme Court Justice is not only a priority for the business community, but for women-owned businesses. Her qualifications are impeccable and her demeanor exudes the ultimate grace under fire. From the hundreds of thousands of small business owners who are women-owned law firms, legal professionals across the country, to the issues that the Supreme Court decides, Judge Jackson's voice is needed and will create an equal lens for women and businesses across the country. We are excited to have the small business community advocate for Judge Jackson's confirmation, and we invite you to connect with your senators when her confirmation comes to the Senate floor. Please be sure 
to make your voice heard in this time that we are in right now. Renee, I'll turn it back over to you. Thank you, Candice. Well, we are so thankful for all of you joining us today. This has been a great conversation about the confirmation of Judge Jackson to the Supreme Court. Uh, we want to thank all of our speakers, Mignon Moore, Ian McGuire, Ron Busby, uh, Bill Inman, uh, Leroy Cavazos <laughs> Reyna, and Candace Waterman um, for joining us today, as well as Brett Buttle. Uh, we thank all of you. And also a recording of this will be emailed to all those who registered. So you can keep a copy of this and also hear the timeline again of the confirmation process. Uh, and also about Mignon's charge to all the small business owners out there and how to engage and uh, advocate for this, this uh, confirmation. Uh, and with that, thank you all so much. Um, we thank you all for joining us today and we hope you have a great weekend.